How's it going guys? My name is Eric Van, Spoopy Visual Novel Time, and welcome to a game called The Letter. Now this game is in Kickstarter right now. Before I mention anything about this game, if you do like what you see, I highly recommend supporting the game if you can, because it's not too often that we get a game like this. This game is a horror visual novel, uh, but they want to really bring up the production budget of this visual novel so that they can put in like uh, animations, QTEs, other gameplay elements, lots of different endings like 15 different endings um so it has a lot of promise it looks really cool and uh yeah if you like what you see please uh, support it down below i have supported it myself as well and i really hope they reach their goal um but i don't know if they will that's why i'm gonna try to help with this video to like advertise the game a little bit i really hope they reach their goal though i think they're at like oh my god i just hit my mic over it's the armageddon um I think they're at like seven thousand something dollars out of thirty thousand so I, I don't know if they're gonna get it but let's Let's hope. Anyways, let's start a new game. The Ermengarde Mansion. You know, when I first saw that, I just started this game up before. All I saw was the Ermagerd. The Ermagerd. Ermagerd. But okay, uh, it's sorry. I'm I'm into it. It was built for Lord William and Lady Elizabeth Ermengarde. Both were well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Humble ambassadors of peace, beloved by their people. The seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of the Great Plague. And this place, it's haunted. Oh my god. Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. I, I, I just can't help it. I'm gonna call her Ermagerd. <laughs> I can't help it. She was orphaned at the age of four. Oh no! She was orphaned at the age of four. Ermagerd! <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm so bad. The mansion stood since the 1620s, a witness to a very long history of joy and pain. After the mysterious disappearance of Lady Charlotte, the great house was left abandoned, and that is when it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things. Cries and howls filled the nights, and hearsay of a mysterious woman that roamed aimlessly. The people who dared enter its halls were simply never heard from again. Even after 400 years, these stories remain, much like the house itself. Whispers about the once great house, its legend and its curse still fall upon the villagers' ears. However, Briar Realty Corporation is convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. Oh, Briar Realty, you're gonna mess stuff up, aren't you? No one should be allowed in here. You should just, like, bulldoze the house and make a new one. That would, there'd still be haunted things there, though. Oh, no. With little regard for the truth, the corporation decided to place the property on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside wait to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Oh, the cur- Oh, shit! There she is! That's the lady that's wandering the halls! Oh, my God. Good luck. No! Good, don't tell me good luck! Don't make me go in there! Isabella. Hmm. Oh, that's- I thought that was someone humming a song, but it's a- It's a cell phone vibrate. See, I like this visual novel. I like the aesthetic of it because there's moving stuff in the background. It's not just a still image. It's kind of cool. You can see the birds flying. Hello? Isabella? Are you there? Where are you? Immediately, I recognized the anxious, jittery voice coming from the other end. Oh, hey, Rose. I'm at St. Greddy High. What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? It's the mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Jeez, we're on shift together. You promised. Oh my god, don't tell me you forgot. You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? You chickened out. Oh, don't go to the mansion. I saw her with my own eyes! Calm down, you know I take my promises seriously. I'd like to believe that, so hurry up and get here. This place is huge, a bit too quiet since nobody's lived here since like forever, but beautiful nonetheless. Why are you surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know, I just wish I could live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumors say that it's haunted. Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real after all. I saw it, Rose! Rose, you're gonna be the first to die. Wait, I'm playing as Rose, aren't I? Because that's like her vision and she's calling Isabella. Oh no. And even they, even if they are, which they are not, they can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. You don't know that! They might be listening right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to use their supernatural ghost powers to curse you! No offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. Ah. Believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right! Anyway, get here ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being on my own. Fine, fine. Just let me just finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Okay, see ya, bye! 
Bye. Rose still charming as ever. Oh wait, I'm Isabella. Yeah, I know what. I, I just okay, whatever. I'm I'm Isabella because it said Isabel at the beginning. I just thought because there was no avatar. But silly me. Okay, I'm I'm Isabella. Who is that? I look up from my phone to see Becca. Oh hey Becca. Oh cool. And that's how the characters are gonna look. They're they're alive. They're animated. See that's that's cool. I dig. I dig. I look up from my phone to see Becca. She gives me a questioning look. She looks kind of creepy, actually. Stop looking at me, you're looking right into my eyes. She's looking right into my eyes. She sees my soul. It's animated, so when, they, when they're looking at you, when they're animated, it's like they're, it looks like they're alive, right? So she's peering into my soul. She sees me for who I truly am. You're the only one who understands me, Becca. I'm sorry. <laughs> Got a little out of hand there. Oh, that, that was, that was Rose. She's an agent like me. We're scoping out that big mansion down at Anselm Village. Today's sort of its grand opening to the public. What, well, she's an agent? An agent? Like a real estate agent? What are we doing? We look like we're in a school, though. The corporation wants us to check it out one last time before we let potential buyers tour it later this afternoon. Okay, so she works for the Briel whatever realty company. A mansion? You mean that big spooky mansion you're telling everyone about? Didn't you keep telling us how it just gave you the creeps? And you have to go there? Well, I did promise Rose I won't ditch her. And besides, a job is a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. <laughs> Ooh. What's so funny? Uh -huh. Nothing. <laughs> it's just I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so out of character. I mean, no offense, but I thought you'd back out. You've been freaking out about the place being cursed and all. Isn't your mantra morality and personal beliefs over money? <laughs> yeah, not no way. Money makes the world go round. Although... I believe in doing what you want to do without regards to money, okay? But, you know, you, you need money to eat, the eats, right? I mean, you can't eat the money, but you gotta, you gotta use it. Not all the time because of the rumors, Briar Realty is desperate to sell the lot, and the agent who lands the deal is going to get a big bonus. I could really use the extra moolah. Mama called last night, Papa isn't getting any better, and they're asking for more money to help with the bloating hospital bills. A sympathetic look crosses Becca's pale face. Life back home is tough, huh? A little bit, yeah. It, it would help if I wasn't the only one in the family who has a job. Tough was an understatement. The burden of feeding eight mouths and settling Papa's bills rested on my shoulders. I barely have enough money left for myself. It used to be easy back when Papa was in good shape. Ever since he was diagnosed with cancer, he had no choice but to leave his job. I just wish my drunkard older brother would lend a hand, but Lord knows if that'll ever happen. I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. She crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. Stop eating junk! They're cheap, but they're not good for you! You don't want to end up in a hospital like your father, do you? Her voice rises as she scolds me. It's clear that it's a command, not a request. I'm not entirely sure if I should be happy or annoyed. Well, you know... Oh, she doesn't look as creepy now. When she first came here, she looked creepier, but she has a stern look on her face now. She looks nice. She looks like she's really... Um, looking out for me. My well-being. I'll listen to you. I'll stop eating those dang darn instant noodles. Glad someone's pointing out for me, but Rebecca's domineering attitude can be such a pain at times. She's more controlling than Mama, and that says a lot. Yeah, I'll stop. I grumbled, but she didn't seem to care much. She gives me a warm smile. Good. Look, if you, if you need anything, tell me, and I'll help in any way I can. You don't have to do this alone. Maybe I can lend you... M oh, sorry, that's Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca's not as low-pitched as Isabella. Maybe I can lend you money, and you can, you can pay me back whenever. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you know, I'm not a fan of borrowing money. <laughs> you and your pride, but suit yourself. The offer stays on the table, though. I nod in response. She takes a quick glance at the wall clock above the chalkboard. Well, enough chit-chat. Lunch is ending and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Good luck with your clients. She turns to her desk, sloppily turning the pages of a rather thick textbook about Mesopotamia. I reckon she's trying to work out her lesson plan for next week, but her eyes are distant and she doesn't seem too attentive on whatever's at the- Oh, she's a teacher! I got it. Lesson plans and stuff. It's obvious something else occupies her thoughts. You sure you can manage on your own, though? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. You shouldn't even be working right now. Oh, hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. I hesitate for a moment. Becca and I are neighbors. She was the first to welcome me when I moved here to England a couple of years ago. She's brazen, feisty, and always had many stories to tell about her friends. We quickly became friends. And with my family staying in the Philippines, she filled the void and became a sort of sister to me. Becca's had a cold for a couple days now, and despite my advice to take the week off and rest, she went ahead to work anyway. 
I caught her trying to sneak out this morning. Since there's no stopping her, I volunteered to drive her to St. Goretti High School where she teaches history to rowdy teenagers. Not exactly the easiest job in the world, but I guess it's perfect with her boisterous and somewhat bossy persona. Oi, Belle! Becca clicks her fingers, snapping me out of my thoughts. Whoa! Seriously, lady, I'll be fine. For now, just go back to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. I'll call you if I, I'll call you if I still feel bad and you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. Capiche? She gives me a reassuring smile. I sigh, defeated. All right, I'll see you later, okay? <laughs> of course. With a wave goodbye, I leave her alone uh, to her classroom and her thoughts. Okay. My car is parked down the street just outside of campus grounds. The mansion is some ways out in the countryside. As I pass by a couple of buildings, I'm about to turn on the radio when my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking. Okay, who is- is it Rose? Rose, I'm on my way. I nearly tuck it between my ear and shoulder. Rose? Guess again! That voice. Oh, sorry, I made that sound really ominous. Ash. Bingo! Hey, what's up? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Ash sounds like a good guy. <laughs> Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. You mean that thing with Zack? Yeah, it's the premiere of that indie movie he's been working on for ages. He's really excited to watch it with his friends, and by friends he means us apparently. Yeah, no, don't worry. I didn't forget, I'll be there. Cool, I'll see you later. What time do you get off? Around 4? 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first day of opening the house at Ermengard Mansion, and we're expecting quite a number of Ermengard. I keep on saying Ermengard because I got it in my head. Okay, number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. Ermengard Mansion? You know, the, the big Jacobian mansion at Anselm Village? I'm on my way there right now, actually. On your own? Yeah, well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see, looks like the scaredy cat finally toughened up. Shut up! I can hear Ash chuckle from the other end. I'll see you later, and drop me a call when you're done. <laughs> whenever, bye! Stupid Baka shit face Ash! Always teasing me whenever he sees a chance. I'll show him who's tough. It takes a few more minutes before I finally reach the infamous mansion. Yeah, I'll show him who's tough. I'm gonna go in there, and I'm gonna slap the wandering ghost right across the face, and I'm gonna flex after. I have to admit, it does look wonderful from the outside, yet that does nothing to hide that something is just wrong. The neighborhood nearby is desolate. Everybody keeps their distance out of fear, horrified at the thought of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow it makes me feel sad. The lack of human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it had any right to be. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place is going to be at night. Well, no one's been in here for how long? 400 years or something? I've, well, people must have actually been in here, upkeeping it a little bit. Parking my car along the vast green fields, I make my approach. I rummage through my bags for the keys when I notice that the door is slightly ajar. Rose must have left it open. Oh no, 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 it wasn't Rose! Entering, I just find myself completely aware of my surroundings. Hey, it's so beautiful in here. This place looks awesome. It's beautiful during the day. Nighttime, it's probably spooky though. They've cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antiques, searched every nook, cranny, and crevice, and made it spick and span. All for the sake of making the mansion more enticing to the modern day lords and ladies. Well, if that's the case, yeah, this place looks well upkept. I mean, it couldn't have just been sitting like this. There's pictures hanging on the wall. But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. As though it was going to eat you alive. If you ask me, they should just leave this place alone. Some things in this world are better left in peace, never to be disturbed ever again. Rose? I call out. Rose, I'm here, where are you? My voice echoes softly through the hallways. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'd hear me despite the deafening silence. She could be all the way on the other side of the mansion for all I knew. I reach for my phone and dial her number, but... The number you have reached is not in service. <gasps> not in service. What do you mean, not in service? We were just talking a while ago. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Or maybe- Oh, that's foreshadowing! That's a pretty strong friggin' foreshadowing! Or maybe the ghost did hear us talking in spirited away, right? Right? Well, you know, Rose did not have an avatar, so that obviously means she's gonna die first. No, Isabella, don't be ridiculous. She probably wandered off deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping to connect this time. The number you have reached is not in service. But to no avail. Oh boy. I have a very bad feeling about this. Rose, if you can hear me, please come out. Come on, Rose, this isn't funny. You know this place gives me the creeps. No answer. This isn't going to work. The place is big. She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. I take a deep breath before venturing on deeper into the mansion. Taking a couple steps forward, I notice something move by the hallway above the grand staircase. Yeah, there was, it's, it's lighter. What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? 
Not funny. I'm leaving you if you don't come out. Silence. Not coming out, huh? Fine, I'm going. Oh, oh no, Isabella. You're, she's freaking out. She's scared. Okay, that was a lie. <laughs> she's terrified. She's my friend. I can't really leave until I know she's all right. I dial her number again, hoping she'd pick up this time. Come on, please give me something. Please, Lord. Yes, finally, it came through. Uh-oh. It's gonna be creepy. Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm, e I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She didn't respond. Albeit there's heavy static coming from her side, I doubt she could hear me. Rose, come on. Where are you? I ask again as the static starts to settle. I, I tried to make it sound as scary as I could. I did my best. What? Why the attic? Isabella, turn around! Don't go to the attic! Rose is dead! I'm sorry, your friend is dead and you're gonna die too if you go to the attic! Oh, it got cut off. Man, do I really need to go there? With how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there, but why was she there? Out of all the places she could be, she just had to make me go fetch her in the creepiest room in this place. Is she doing this to get back at me for being late? Whatever, I'll just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better about being in this place. I make my way carefully up the staircase. Okay, I'm saving my game! Yeah, good. I'm, that, that was a quick save. That was nice. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I chose real estate when I could have picked up a career that didn't involve strange abandoned houses. Well, how did you know the real estate was going to lead you to this place? You didn't know. I love it! The, the backgrounds are so cool because they're moving! It's, I love it. Okay, anyways. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greeted me. The hallway had two wings, the east wing and the west wing. The two master bedrooms in the library were situated in the east wing. Meanwhile, I faced the west wing, which held the conference room, the theater room, and at the end of the hall, a simple wooden door leading upstairs to the attic. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs that led to the attic are deep, steep, and were made of rocks. If I'm not too careful, I could easily stumble and fall. Thank God it's still daytime. With how old the place was, there was no light fixtures, and I need a candle or a flashlight to make my way around. Reaching the top, the door opened to a maid's quarters. I want to see a maid. <laughs> but not a ghost maid. It looks exactly as it had been since the last time I was here. Full of dust, worn out and faded by time. Did the cleaning crew miss this room? Ugh, cleanliness is the last of my concerns right now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here. Bloody hell. Well, what did you think? She was all like, hey, hey, dick. And you're already freaking out because there's supernatural stuff here. You should have got out. Should have came back with an army of people. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear? As soon as you start saying stuff like that, you know it's time to go. Did I mishear her? Was I dreaming? Get the hell out. Something's going on. No, no, it couldn't have been a dream. And I'm sure she said she was here in the attic. After all, the creepy ambience of this estate is doing such a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. Maybe this is just a prank. Or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got to her. Ugh, shut up, brain. You are not helping. Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? That's it. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. Good. Oh, that's good. We must have angered the spirits living here. I knew disturbing this mansion was a bad idea right from the very start. Oh my god, that's that's a lot of sense for someone in a horror game. Like, okay, I'm getting out of here. I'm peacing out. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. They think I'm cuckoo because I believed in curses and ghosts and all that. Me and my outlandish backwater country beliefs. I've always strived to be model employee. But not this time, no. I'm turning back for the sake of my sanity. Briar Realty can find another agent who is more fucking realistic than me to tour people around this haunted house. Before turning back, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Huh? What's this? My worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss it when I first entered the room. But there's clearly something on the- it's her phone. It looks like... a letter. Oh, it's a letter! This game's called The Letter! I... Got it. It's a letter lying on the ground just a couple of inches away from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity, I lean down and pick it up. Strange, I don't recall seeing this letter the last time I was here. A few days ago, a few other agents and I were exploring the mansion prior for today. I had been the last to look inside the attic and leave, and this certainly hasn't been here before. Someone must have been in this room since then. Did Rose leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her though, could I? There's only one set of stairs to and from the attic. Only one way to find out. The letter isn't exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient. The paper is so thin and rough, I'm worried that it'll fall apart if I so much as touch it. I need to be careful. I open it, and what I read shook me to my core. 
Don't leave me in. Oh, whoa! Hey, that's. Oh, Rose is. Get out of here! Rose is dead! I oh, yeah, that's not good. Oh, oh my god! If the letter, it's filled with nothing but the words help me written in a crimson shaded pen. Yeah, crimson shaded pen. I call that tomato juice in my world, okay? Or blood. Or tomato juice. I gulp. The same phrase just keeps me on going and going until... Send this to... Ah! <laughs> oh, no way! That's like... <laughs> it's a chain letter! <laughs> Send this to five people or else. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, now it's got to be a joke from Rose. Send this to five people or else. Or else what? Or else what? As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper. I peek into the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on a second page. But there's nothing. No, please, no. My hands are trembling as dread creeps over me. So it's like an actual, like, it's a chain letter, but from like a ghost. Like, if you don't send this, you'll die. I start to realize that the room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here. Folding the paper in half, the sight that greets me next has me frozen on the spot. Oh, Jesus! Holy shit! Okay, the the idea that this is a prank is like not, it's it's gone. A pair of blood-soaked feet enters my field of vision covered in gaping wounds with skin eaten away to reveal flesh, bone, and all manner of things one isn't meant to see. Nerves and veins are exposed in a grotesque display. A foot rested at a painfully odd angle and all the toenails seem to have fallen off, leaving only the decayed remains of infected nail beds in their way. That's descriptive! Oh my god, they, you oh. <laughs> Oh my god, I can feel bile rising in my throat at the gory sight. It's too much. All of it is too much. I want to make a break for the run scheme, throw up anything, but my feet won't bite. Gotta get, no, gotta get out of here! I feel trapped in my own body, glued to the floor out of terror. The only sign that I am still alive is the loud beating in my heart as it echoes in my ears and the tremor that continuously runs through my body. I'm definitely not breathing. Or maybe I am, but Lord knows it certainly doesn't feel like it. I open my mouth to say something, but the words catch in my throat. I'm completely paralyzed and frozen on the spot. What would you even say? Um, uh, hello? That's not gonna help. I want to cry. I, I don't know what I should do. Lord, please help me. Be brave and look up. Close. Oh, no. The Lord's not gonna help you. Be brave and look up. I need to face it. Whoever, whatever these feet belong to, I need to face it. And if I'm gonna die, if they're gonna kill me, at least I'll know what my killer looks like. A cold comfort. I can feel tears forming in the corner of my eye and my whole body trembles still. I've never felt this vulnerable in my entire life. I take a deep breath, summon every ounce of courage I have left in me, and shift my gaze upwards. Oh, holy shit, that looks creepy. Oh, huh? Papa, please don't hurt me. You should have said hello first. No! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, am I gonna have- Oh shit, am I gonna have to do QT this, QT this? Without thinking, I scramble towards the door and hurry up to my feet. I struggle to open it, but it won't budge. So stay away, go away, please lord, make it go away! Why now, why won't it open now? My heart sinks as reality dawns in. I'm locked, locked in with that thing. Let me out, let me out, lord, please, let me out! I feel slowly approach me as I wrench the doorknob violently back and forth. Oh shit, oh Tabsy! Da -da 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 -da. I got it! Yes! The door finally swings open and I couldn't have been happier. Wasting no time, I leap out the door and I don't look back. My feet pound against the floor like cassophony of drums in rhythm with the loud, fast beating of my heart. My chest feels so tight like it's going to burst by the time I run past the hallway and find myself atop the grand staircase. But that's nothing compared to the feeling of hope that the sight of the exit gives me. Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me and my shoe slips and I find myself falling. Oh no! So my back hits the ground and pain racks my body. <gasps> I feel my head grow fuzzy, my vision dims even as I fight to stay awake. No! Go Away! The last thing I see are those feet before all that I know is darkness. To be continued. Oh, that's the end! I was so getting into that, but... I want to find- No, this is good! And that's why... I really wanted to promote this game. I mean... Oh my god, this game, it, it has so much potential to be awesome, there's there's multiple characters you play as, multiple endings, and all these decisions that you gotta make in QTEs, and it's animated, and this visual novel could be so good! And so if you did like it, and you have the resources to do so, I highly recommend checking it out on Kickstarter and supporting it. Um, I have as well, and uh, I really hope this gets kickstarted. It is green lit, I think, it says Steam Greenlight, so... Hopefully, even if the Kickstarter doesn't get up, like, it'll still be available. But, I mean, I really hope the Kickstarter does, um, meet its goal. Because if that's the case, then they'll have more time and money to put into the game and they'll make it better, right? But, um, anyways, whatever. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was really cool. 
I'm really I'm excited for this game. I hope it sees the light at some point. It was really fun and thrilling. Oh yeah, it was good. Got a good feeling about it. Well, and I like it because like the developers reached out to me and they said play it on the channel and advertise it. And it's cool because I like it when developers use Let's Players like that. They like see the benefits of Let's Plays in the world of advertising their game. And it's cool, I like that. Like some companies are like, no, let's play. We hate you, we don't need you. You guys suck. Copyright infringement, but like people like this that embrace it, I like that a lot and it means a lot to me that they reached out to me um, to promote the game on the channel. Well, anyways, really hope you enjoyed. See you in future videos on the channel. As always, guys, peace.